that sure coming at you today, Rain Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, sending some love, some positive vibes your way, especially if you need them today. Hey guys, we have Apothecary. <laughs> That's right, a champion that is old is dirt in this game. Does he still have it? My answer to you guys is a resounding yes. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. But why? Why are we talking about freaking Apothecary in mid-July 2024 or whatever, right? There's a good reason for this video, guys. It's because this guy is actually better than ever. That's right, Apothecary is better than ever. I'm talking end game, mid game, early game. You're still gonna love Apothecary in all the ways that we loved him back in 2019, right? Uh, he has that dungeon or a lead. He's great for progression. He's great for arena. You can play him really everywhere. He's got the triple hitter on the A1. He's got the increased speed. He's got the uh, turn meter boost as well on a three turn cooldown. He's got the soothing chant, right? This ability is so good. It's a critical heal on a two turn cooldown. What this does does with apothecary is if you want to solo or duo content you don't need to ever have to think about putting apothecary in a regeneration and an immortal set you can basically put him in a toxic set or the exact build that i'm going to share with you guys today and this guy can act as if he has a regen in immortal set on him vis-a-vis -vis the soothing chant on the a2 ability right so that's the magic of apothecary this can be useful for the most challenging some of the most challenging doom tower boss uh, in Centranos as well. For example, in the build that I'm going to show you guys today, I don't have it on this rotation. I haven't unlocked it yet. It's a fresh uh, Centranos. Uh, but he can solo, you know, the Iron Twins, for example, right? And there's no accuracy needed. I'm going to show you how to solo Frost Spider with Apothecary, right? And, well, actually, not solo, solo duo, right? We need some sort of a burn on the Frost Spider or a Lydia to prevent the, uh, you know, the resurrection of the Frost Spider. But what I'm trying to tell you guys is we don't have to worry about accuracy requirements which makes this an enormously easy build for everybody out there uh so i'm going to show you some of those runs that i referred to earlier but let's take a look at the build here first guys it is a retaliation and a toxic set okay so toxic is 75 percent chance to place the weak version of a poison for two turns retaliation helps land more poisons that's going to have a 15 percent chance to counterattack when hit so going in with that a1 ability on the retaliation now that it's only a two-piece set about a year ago they made that change but i really like retaliation as kind of a fill-in set when you don't need that perception when you don't need accuracy on a specific champion obviously there is no mandate for accuracy as we already mentioned on this build of Apothecary. He's not landing any other debuffs or doing anything else that would require accuracy. Uh, so we don't need to worry about it, right? It's coming from an artifact set, thus it does not need accuracy to apply. However, uh, we can still take advantage of Sniper and Master Hexer. Listen, it could be Apothecary or anybody on your account that you're utilizing in a toxic set to try to min-max and get more damage from your supports or maybe solo content. Uh, make sure you pick up Sniper. I've seen some players out there use toxic builds or toxic sets excuse me and not take advantage of getting that 75 percent to an 80 percent right any debuff placed from a skill or artifact gets bumped up by five percent excluding stun from stun set sleep freeze yada 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 but not excluding obviously poison right so we want sniper we also should note that master hexer also will work with the poisons from the toxic set so make sure you pick up master hexer and sniper not just on a apothecary but any toxic build that you're using uh, i did go down and pick up unshakable on this particular build we could go offense and pick up war master instead that will give us a little bit more damage a little bit faster and add a little bit of speed to these runs also notable we have a blood shield ring revenge accessories works very well on him i don't have him in revenge right now didn't have any available but blood shield plus an emergency heal if you do have him awakened is going to be a great combo to help keep him alive and ensure that he's always topped off all the time with that little shield and the heal, more importantly, that comes henceforth with the emergency heal. Uh, okay, so we have a toxic set. I have HP percentage on the gauntlets. I have HP percentage on the chest and I have speed on the boots. Just looking for resist and survivability. So I have resist, I have HP and I have some defense. That's basically it. Not God tier gear, but not awful gear either. I do have some decent ascensions for more survivability on the HP and the defense. Guys, let's go ahead and start out. <laughs> what do you think? I don't want to. 
Let's go Scarab King first. And Fire Knight as well, right? I have teams for all these. You know, let's just start out with the most obvious really quickly, right? Fire Knight, 25. He's a GOAT. I just threw him with a bunch of kind of randos, but randos who are good in Fire Knight, right? Multi-hitter A1s. Farrakhan in the Fat for a little bit of ally attack. Uh, you know, obviously, Ugo to keep everybody alive. I'll come back to you guys when we get to the actual Fire Knight. All right, guys. Here we go against the Fire Knight. Obviously, with a triple hitter on his A1, he's going to be a bastion of your Fire Knight teams really from the get-go, right? If you're lucky enough to pull this rare champion. I remember back in my day everybody wanted to get apothecary they still do i think want to get apothecary to be fair right new players out there you can see the you know the poisons will obviously help a little bit against the fire knight but the poisons are mainly for the rest of the strats that we're going to show on today's video but man i remember opening mystery shards when i just first started playing just in hopes of getting a rare in just in hopes of that rare being Apothecary. And when I finally got him, I don't remember if it was from a mystery shard. It probably wasn't. Uh, but when I finally got him, I was so happy. Like, I thought I had beaten Raid Shadow Legends. Ah, the good old days, huh? The good old days. I, we can't talk about that. I'm going to cry. <laughs> anyway, here we go. He's just great because he keeps everybody with the increased speed. He keeps the term of your boosting. All very important to have that speed advantage against the Fire Knight, obviously. Uh, and he has the triple hitter for the shield as well on his A1 ability. So he's really the perfect Fire Knight champion. He's a perfect Fire Knight champion, uh, you know, with an ally attacker as well. Like This is like the only kind of old school apothecary strat that I'll show you guys. Uh, not even a strat, really. It's just like a use case for him, right? Uh, but you can really use him anywhere as an aura lead as well. Uh, let's go ahead to go to the final stage of Doom Tower Hard Frost Spider, where remember, accuracy doesn't matter. So, the final boss, Doom Tower Hard, here, guys. I'm going to use Magnardus to kind of clear through the waves a little bit faster, right? Uh, but the requirements, that requirements, basically for every Doom Tower boss for the most part, you can use the same strategy, by the way. I'm only showing you a couple strats. But you can solo uh, the Griffin, same exact settings, everything the same here as well. Uh, but you want over 300. 160 resistance right the closer to 400 the better this is for hard right and then for speed we really recommend over 250 speed on your apothecary uh, i'll come back to at you guys at this spider all right guys so 16 minutes later i never said it was a speed run did i we have apothecary <laughs> Again, guys, he's not in regen or immortal. He has no accuracy, and he's a little rare champion, taking down the big final boss of Doom Tower on the hardest setting. Not too bad. Not too bad, Apothecary. I'm impressed. Hopefully, some of you guys are as well. The emergency heal helping out, but really, I don't even think we need the emergency heal here. Lydia at the very end comes in there just to prevent, again, the resurrection of the Frost Spider. But there it is, putting out a cool, clean 33 milli in damage, no big deal, as well as almost 3 million in the healing. Apothecary, we, we love you, buddy. We love you. Come here, you bastard. <laughs> Let's go over to the Scarab King now, guys. So Scarab King, keep in mind, he is the wrong affinity, right? Magic versus force here. He's going to solo it, including all of the waves. We're just going to let him have it here all by himself. I do want to note one thing. We talked about masteries early on in the video. You may, if you have trouble, depending on where you are in your account, if you have trouble getting to, to around 250 speed or having him fast enough to be able to heal himself up and stuff, you may have to sacrifice the Master Hexer or the sniper right and you might have to instead go with spirit haste to get that extra speed uh just kind of a note to you guys right so for 100 scarab king i'm gonna come at you guys when we are done but again this is gonna be a cinch super super easy i will say if anything goes wrong here if you're using other champions along with apothecary right so if you're bringing somebody else with the waves let's pretend that was a maxed out fushan that i was using there you may wipe when you get to the Scarab King, okay? There might just be too many attacks if they don't die fast enough, whoever you're using with for a wave clear alongside Apothecary, they might make the team wipe too many counterattacks, too many attacks uh, from the Scarab King. So keep that in mind. The sure way to have 100% success rate is to let Apothecary clear the waves as well. Uh, otherwise, just make sure that whoever you're bringing dies pretty early on, right? They can't stay alive for too long and Apothecary can be troublesome in that regard. He can help keep them alive, right? Anyway, guys, uh, I'll come back at you guys in about, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. Be right back. All right, guys, I was pretty spot on by the 20 minutes here. We're 18 and a half minutes in but again, he has taken down the Scarab King. So guys, 
I've been trying to like mix in videos like this, a little bit more unique guides or, or builds, excuse me, updated builds, end game, mid game, early game for champions that are old news inside the game. Just trying to prove that you can get utility out of some of these champions, even rares like Apothecary. Granted, one of the best rares in the game, but a rare at the end of the day. So you guys let me know if you use any kind of unorthodox, maybe outside the box builds on any old school champions or new ones for that matter. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Is Apothecary going to beat the Scarab King in less than 20 minutes? It looks like he is. Those last two, po three poisons, four poisons. <laughs> All right, there he goes, guys. Seven million in the heels. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Hopefully you enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for watching till the end. Much love. And as always, take care, guys.